Thank you for joining us today and welcome to my sewing room. We have such a fun and exciting topic for you today. It's called applique. The first garment I have for you is a really sweet ladies jumper with all kinds of interesting ideas on it. Has three little rabbits across the front looking so cute with the little fluffy tails and little hearts applique on the rabbit. And there is a wonderful little saying which has been machine stitched on this jumper. A friend is someone who reaches for your hand and touches your heart. And then right below, there are three absolutely adorable hearts and used lots of colors that are picked up in the, from the main fabric of the jumper. Special occasion dressing is certainly fun when you know how to sew. This particular jumper would be very sweet for a 4th of July party or any kind of patriotic occasion. Stitched from the sewing machine are the words, God bless America, and then the rest of the bodice of this jumper has adorable like a little doll carrying a flag and three more little hearts down here with other patriotic um, calico pieces. You can even go to the discount store and purchase a sweatshirt and put applique on the front as we have done here with these adorable satin ballet shoes. This is a sweatshirt most any little girl would love to wear, especially those who love ballet. Peppers in every color. Isn't this a fun applique blouse? There are yellow and orange and red and pink peppers, and there are red pepper buttons down the front of this handkerchief linen blouse. A really cute and bright summer outfit. Little boys love applique. When my boys were little, that was about 28 and 29 years ago, I appliqued nearly everything they wore. Look at this precious little button on the shoulder suit for a little boy. More applique for a little girl, another button on the shoulder, adorable uh, jumper for a little girl. And the final outfit to show you I think is really elegant. It's a reversible vest with applique on one side, the red side, and then reversing to the back. It turns into a green vest with a really elegant black applique on the back. And then when it's reversed, let me turn it around. Isn't that pretty and really sophisticated? Now, go with me over to the technique boards where I will begin to share with you some wonderful techniques for applique. In beginning to do applique, I have a piece of fashion fabric. Next, I have my pattern, in this case a heart, drawn onto paper-backed fusible web. This is a special applique uh, product which has does not have sticky on one side, and if I turn it up this side will, will be a sticky side which will press down and fuse. All right, I press this pattern onto the wrong side of the fabric and then I peel off the paper part of the fabric leaving the sticky side on the fabric. Then I press on, sticky side down, the heart onto my garment and then I zigzag around the heart completing my applique. Now let's go to the sewing machine for some more details on exactly how applique is done. I am happy today to have as my guest Louise Baird who is applique consultant for So Beautiful magazine and boy does she have some tricks for you. Welcome to the show Louise. What do you have for us today? Well, I have the uh, instructions for beginning applique or how to Put your applique down on your fabric and uh, then satin stitch around the edges. So repeating what Martha had to say, after tracing my design onto the fusible web, the, the paper side, I fused it to my fabric, cut it out, and then the paper needs to be removed. That's all right. <laughs> And after all of the paper is removed, then you fuse it to the garment. This is, the blue is called the applique fabric and the red would be called your base fabric. After you have fused it to your base fabric, 
A stabilizer needs to be placed onto the wrong side of your fabric, mainly because the, uh, to keep your satin stitches even. Next thing is to set up your sewing machine for a satin stitch. The stitch length needs to be short enough so that there's no gaps between the stitches. Uh, the top tension should be loosened so that if you can look here, the white or bobbin thread shows up on the wrong side, but so does the top thread. This is when your fabric, your thread is loosened enough so that your bobbin thread pulls the top to the right, pulls the thread to the wrong side. Now when you're doing a curve on satin stitch, this is really the way that it looks. This is an inside curve here, this is an outside curve. When you're working on an inside curve, you want to pivot or leave the needle in the fabric on the inside of the curve because there's greater area to cover on the inside of that curve. On an outer curve, you leave it on the outside. This is the way that your satin stitch should look when you have done curves. On this side, I have shown uh, leaving the needle in on the wrong side. Can you see the little V's that's created? I do. If you leave your needle in on the wrong side to do your pivoting. Now, one of the most interesting things to do in applique are corners, and there are several different kinds of corners that you can do. There are block corners. These are outside block corners. This is an inside block corner. You can see it goes into the fabric. And then these are mitered corners. And what I would like to show you today is doing about doing the corners. Now I have my applique onto my fabric, my base fabric, and a stabilizer behind. When I begin, I like to first hold on to my top thread and take a stitch so that my bobbin thread comes to the right side. And then I place it under. This just helps it to be neater when you have finished. And then satin stitch. When you do your satin stitching, the stitch should be almost completely on the applique itself instead of too far onto the base fabric or too far onto the uh, applique. So as we stitch down to the corner, the first block I'll show you is a block corner. When you have stitched all the way down to the corner, leave your needle down on the outside edge, on the, in this case on the right, and pivot 90 degrees. And with the block corner, all you have to do now is to begin to sew again, stitching over that first area that you have stitched before. Now one of the prettiest corners to do is a mitered corner. A mitered corner is a corner like this. It shows like a frame. It has a mitered corner to it. And on this one you would again stitch down until you're on the very outside edge. If your machine has a needle down button, this is a good place to engage it. After you pivot 90 degrees, you want to place your machine in a zigzag stitch with a right needle position. And my machine's already placed in a right needle position. Go down to a zero stitch width on your machine, which on this machine I'm pressing the button to do it. Some machines have a dial that you can change your stitch width. For the first stitch, make sure it goes back in the same hole that you just came out of. And now, as you continue to stitch again, you should increase your stitch width. And on the machines that have the button, you can press it the same amount of times to get the same stitch width. By the time you finish stitching, where uh, the end of the stitching, you should be at the same stitch width that you were starting with. An inside corner is really the same, except that you should stitch into the fabric the width of your stitch. And if you bisect the corners with a blue or purple pen, you can gauge when you should do that. After turning 90 degrees, I am going to engage my um, reverse needle or mirror image position 
go down to a zero stitch width again by pressing the button is by that right? pressing the button on this machine and then for the first stitch make sure it goes in the same hole it just came out of and now stitch again I will since I was on a five stitch width I'll press it ten times this time Okay. gradually as you go out as we go out it'll increase to give it a miter and that's really all there is to doing the mitered corners it takes a little bit more practice but it gives a prettier corner when you finish with it. Louise, I just love those mitered corners and thank you so much for thank showing you, us how to do them. It looks a little bit easier when you show it. Let's see how you make a little dress. What are we going to do On a, to make an heirloom dress? This precious little collar, which is a re, uh, you know a removable collar, has the cutest little um, appliques. Let me turn it around and show you the back. Some more cute little appliques in the back. Now, how did those happen? Louise has just shown you, but let me refresh your memory. First of all, on this paper, which has one sticky side and one not sticky side, we drew off the little applique designs. Then pressed them down onto the fashion fabric. Then cut out the little flower. See how we cut them out? Peel off that paper. And this will do the same thing with the little leaves. Now, let's go over here. Press them on the collar, on the back of the collar, on the front of the collar. All of this has just been pressed down. Then we do this, uh, applique the leaves, and then come in here and applique the stems. And lastly, applique the flowers. And then to put some grass on this little collar, we're going to go ahead and just put one final strip here. And there is how to make this absolutely adorable little applique collar. You know, we're going to use applique on a quilt square too, so... Come on along and let me share with you how this is done. This quilt square today is really beautiful and actually the technique is a tiny bit different so let me share that with you. This particular quilt square has really sweet little hearts. This is out of an ecru Swiss batiste done on a blue silk batiste quilt square. I draw the designs off on the Swiss batiste. Actually, it's a very thin fabric, so I want to use two layers of Swiss Batiste, and I do not want to use a fusible web behind this because on thin fabric, it isn't a good idea. So, I put a piece of stabilizer only behind these two layers of fabric, and then I zigzag, tiny zigzag around each one of these hearts, then trim away the extra layers of Swiss Batiste in the ecru, and so I just have the hearts tiny zigzagged around there and then go back and zigzag your pretty zigzagging around the hearts. That's an interesting way not to use the fusible web. Next, we have a really sweet little doll dress for you with some applique watermelons on her skirt. Sometimes my dolls like little casual dresses to wear perhaps to a summer picnic. This doll dress is really an easy one to make and so much fun, especially if you love to do applique. The little bodice of her dress features little machine scallops, little decorative hearts on top of a little ribbon piece, our little drop-waisted dress. The cutest part of this dress is down at the bottom. Little watermelon slices. Now here's a little watermelon slice that has not had a bite taken out of it. And then the next little watermelon slice that you see here has had a bite taken out. Well, as a matter of fact, it has had two bites taken out of it. And then the trim on the dress features a sweet little machine scallop in the same color as the watermelon rind. Now, how did this little dress, how did these little watermelons get on this dress? Let's walk through it step by step. First of all, I cut out the different pieces of watermelon. I, well, put the fusible web on it and then cut it out. Then I take the fusible web off both of the pieces. Let me try to get this where you can see. And then I place the watermelon down and the watermelon rind down and press it. Therefore, it fuses it into the fabric. It's kind of glued down. Now, in applique, 
I stitch, I do my zigzagging background to foreground. So let me take you in sequence to show you the background to foreground. Here we go. I zigzag the watermelon first. So I do my pink thread up and down. Next little stitch comes around the watermelon rind. Down the side, across the bottom, up the side. The next little stitch comes the top of the watermelon rind right along here. Okay, now let me flip it over. Here comes the fun part. We're going to be putting in the um, going to be putting in the watermelon seeds. The next part of the stitching will be the two little watermelon seeds right here. And then I have all of it finished, zigzag, background to foreground. It's now time to put the little machine scallops on and then finish completing the dress. Next we have a beautiful wool embroidery stitch for you. Wool embroidery is one of my favorite forms of needlework. I am very pleased today to have as my guest Esther Randall, author of Esther's Silk Ribbon Embroidery. Welcome to the show, Esther. Thank you, Martha. Today, Martha, we're going to work on the herringbone stitch. And there again is another wonderful stitch that you can do just wonderful things with. Not your, your yarn. You pull it up from the bottom, bring it to the right, go and back to the left. So you're moving from one side to the other, always with the thread down under your stitch, needle going on top. This is a most wonderful stitch for your crazy patch because you can use it as a base. You can use the herringbone for a fern stitch, which will give you this wonderful base. Esther, I've seen a lot of antique crazy patch that has that stitch Right. On it. This is just an old favorite. Now, that looks a little bit plain. Let's try another color going directly over from the middle of that stitch. And this is an old-fashioned stitch called Victorian stacking with the herringbone. Victorian stacking. Victorian stacking. So you can just add all sorts of embellishments. Now, the previous stitches that we have used, the Lazy Daisy and the French Knot, will just fit right in. So you see, this is just such, and that gives you a whole different look. All right? Now, let's do another thing. Let's put three colors of our wool yarn into our needle. And I always just pull the, pull it very tight between my finger and thumb, put the needle in. Of course, you're going to need a larger needle to get these through, and pull the three colors through. Well, two. That's all right, Esther. We got okay. the idea. You can do three if you're patient. <laughs> all right. Now, let's go in and stack once again. And then this is where your wonderful color starts to come in because you have, and it looks like a, you can make a very expensive braid with this very look. That is you see so how you pretty. can just keep adding your colors and, but be gentle with this wool yarn. Treat it as, as it should be used because it's, it's so soft and so supple oh, Esther, that it blends that right is in. beautiful. Thank this you. Next, we have a wonderful home decorating idea for you. This applique rose pillow, I think, is very elegant and very expensive looking. And guess what? It's also very easy to make. The little pillow has a border around it which looks almost like a picture frame and then the and it's actually applique down too it has a, an ecru base a pink border and then the applique rose is applique on top let's see exactly how it's put together first of all using a fusible under uh, under paper you fuse down the picture frame part on the outside now remember applique has worked background to foreground so Come on back down here and let's just move these little pieces and see exactly how it's worked. I almost lost one of them underneath the pillow, didn't I? First of all, the two leaves are the most background part of the background. So we'll come in here, 
pull the paper off the leaf, take an iron, press it down, and do the same thing with this leaf. And then we will applique those two leaves down. Next, do the same thing to the rows, and then the number of pieces you have, do the same thing, applique it down, and then here are the other pieces, and that's all there is to it. Now we have a really exciting hot glue gun craft idea for you. If you have access to perhaps some of your grandmother's sewing stuff, such as thread and scissors and maybe an old pair of glasses, you can make something beautiful for your sewing room or your living room or your family room. This wreath, I think, is absolutely precious. It has all kinds of antique goodies, simply hot glue gun, antique sewing goodies, an old zipper, old thread, an old piece of quilt, some old glasses. Let's just see exactly how this was done. Purchase a grapevine wreath and for sure get yourself a hot glue gun or a bottle of, of glue. Maybe have some old glasses. This particular little toy, which is uh, glued on, is uh, probably a Christmas tree ornament, but it's a little antique looking sewing machine. Here are some little threads, and guess what? It's so funny. The prices are still on these threads. They say 15 cents and 19 cents. That was a while ago, wasn't it? Those can be glued on. Here is an old pair of scissors, a very old thimble, just a little white flower, a little quilting piece, a few needles, all kinds of old stuff. Glue them on and have fun. I love to collect antique clothes, and I'd like to invite you to go up into my attic Let's take a peek inside my grandmother's trunk and see what beautiful antique clothes we can share to together today. Since this is the applique show, I tried to choose some heirloom clothing which had applique, and guess what? I found some. This beautiful blouse features sets of five tucks on the shoulders, then a wide tuck, five pin tucks, a wide tuck, five pin tucks. This tuck situation goes all the way across the front of the blouse. Then there is some pretty lace, but guess what? A lovely lace motif has been appliqued on right in the center of this blouse. So you see, ladies a long time ago loved applique also. This dress is absolutely wonderful. It has lots of intricate lace shaping and edging all over the bodice of the dress. And right here in the center, if you will look, once again, there is an absolutely beautiful applique. Just simply stitched on at various little points right on top of the dress. This dress has a lovely skirt also. I think so many dresses that just have tucks all the way down, except this one has a little bit of lace interspersed in between the tucks but truly, truly elegant on a dress yesterday as well as a dress today. For our Sewing from the Heart segment, I had an idea I would like to share with you. Recently, I had the privilege of traveling on a mission crusade with my church to Jamaica, Montego Bay, Jamaica. We took a sewing segment for the ladies. We taught one day, we taught smocking, and one day we taught shadow work embroidery. Our pastor said that he had never taken an actual activity for the ladies on a mission crusade. It was well received. I think ladies around the world would love to have uh, hand sewing lessons. And of course, if sewing machines are available, I believe that they would enjoy that too. But you see, it's really easy to take some fabric, some embroidery floss, and some needles. And we had four wonderful days doing smocking and shadow work embroidery with some very appreciative ladies down in Malden and Montego Bay, Jamaica. Well, I thank you so much for being with me today. We've had a wonderful time sharing all kinds of ideas about applique with you, and I certainly hope you will be able to come back next time.